I have two different questions about change of basis and what that looks like visually. The first is this. I have here a grid system corresponding to the basis vectors b1 and b2. And I can take any vector, for example the x vector, and I can write it in that basis system 2, minus 1, as we've seen before. Now, what I think is interesting about this is that there's still some sense that this is drawn with respect to somebody in the standard basis system. Indeed, I can take this picture, and I can still see that there's the standard basis kind of like hidden behind it. I just don't choose to draw it. That is to say, when I'm talking about non-standard basis systems, I'm drawing them still. I'm drawing these lines that go off weird angles still with respect to somebody who's viewing it in the standard basis system, to somebody that still sees the standard basis behind this. So my first question is, what on earth does this basis look like to somebody who sort of has grown up in the B basis and never seen the standard system? How would they draw a good system? My second question is this. We've seen previously that we have these change of basis matrices. So for example, we've seen that we can apply some matrix that takes the vector x, multiplies this by pb inverse, and takes it to the x in the b basis. Now, this is just a transformation. What exactly does that transformation do? How do I visualize that transformation? Turns out the answer to the one question is the answer to the other question. So let's go, I program this into the computer, let's watch what happens. So applying the PB inverse matrix, this just takes everything and kind of stretches it until it looks standard. But, but here's the key point. This is the B basis still. It is the B basis, but it's now thought of from the perspective of somebody who would be in that B basis. Indeed, to somebody in the B basis, what does B1 look like? Well, B1 is one step along B1. To somebody in the B basis, they would say that the vector B written in the B basis is just one zero. It's one step to the right to them. And likewise for B2 written in the B basis, this is just one copy of going along the B2 and not going along the B1 at all. It just looks like zero one. So for somebody in the B basis, somebody who's never seen the standard basis, they would, if they were trying to draw their coordinate system, probably come up with the same kind of standard Cartesian system that we have. And they would talk about taking one step to the right meant going along their B1 once, and one step up meant going along their B2 once. And then we can undo this whole process. So, for example, now that I'm living in the B basis, I can apply the other matrix that was relevant. I could multiply by P sub B. And if I do this, I go from the B basis back to the standard basis, and well, what happens if we program it in? Indeed, it takes us back exactly to where we began. All right, let me repeat this exact same story again, but now for a C basis. So again, I've got a C basis, a different one now. I've got my vector x. It's the same vector x I had before, but now it looks like 3, 2 from the perspective of somebody in the C basis. And then I can go and I can transform this. I can apply this PC inverse, that's going to take it into the C basis, and what does it do? Well, it sort of straightens everything out. It makes it look, from the perspective of the C basis, the way someone in the C basis would probably have come up with a grid system if they didn't know about the standard system. That is, taking one step to the right is just the same thing as taking C1 in the C basis. That, that 0, 1, the one step up, that's just the same thing as C2 in this C basis. And exactly the same way I can go and I can earn verb back by taking the multiplication by p sub c, and that goes and takes everything and transforms it back to where it began. So the point is this. When I have a non-standard basis and I get these angles between my lines, that, that is all written from the perspective of the standard basis. But if you actually wrote them from the perspective of the b or the c transformation, they would look straight. All right, let's dive into this just one layer deeper. We've seen this formula before. This is the change of basis formula, and it's a multiplication of different matrices. I start with xb, then I'm going to multiply by pb, and then I'm going to multiply by pc inverse. So what's exactly going on at each level? The sort of most outside level is just looking at the xb itself. That is the vector x written in the b basis, and so it's living in b basis world. It's from the perspective of the b basis. 
Then I multiply by the PB. And what the PB did, its function was to transform from the B basis into the standard basis. So sort of the next level, I'm going to have everything thought of from the standard basis perspective. And then finally, the PC inverse, that's going to convert out of the standard basis into the C basis. And so when I do the multiplication of all of them, I end up with a perspective in the C basis. So I start in the B, I end up in the C. Okay, let's trace this geometrically. So let me begin on the outside here where I've just got the x sub b. And, and what that means geometrically is I'm in the b basis. So it's the b basis vectors here, the pink and the orange. But they're written in sort of a, what looks like a normal grid because to the b basis, they think of the b basis as just a normal grid. Indeed, the green arrow, the 2 minus 1, makes sense as a 2 minus 1. It's two steps to the right, one step down, where again, a step to the right is going along B1, and a step up would be going along B2. Okay, now I apply PB. Well, we've actually already watched that. So what PB does is it takes things, and it puts it back into the standard basis, where now I've got the things in my B basis vectors. They end up being at weird angles in the standard basis. Now, here's the trickiest part. We're in the standard basis. So I can represent this green vector in many different ways. Right now, I'm taking the green vector and writing it in terms of the B basis. But because I'm in the standard, I can overlay any other basis I want. So what would happen? I'm not going to change the green at all. But what I am going to do is I'm going to change from B to C's. So I haven't transformed anything, right? I haven't applied a matrix. The green vector is exactly where it began. It's just that before when I was going from B to standard, I used the grid lines, like the things I chose to show you were things relevant to B. Now I am choosing to show you things relevant to the C. I'm not applying a transformation. I'm just choosing different things to show you when I program it out on the screen here. Okay, now I'm going to go and multiply by this PC inverse. And what happens there? Well, indeed, it's going to go and look from the perspective of the C basis. So this particular change of basis matrix is a composition of two transformations. The first transformation starts in the B basis, and it transforms it into the standard basis. I then rewrite my grid line to show you the interesting things. And I take from the standard basis to the C basis. So really, any change of coordinates between two non-standard ones, you can interpret this as transforming into the standard and then out of the standard. And that's the way I can get from the B basis to the C basis.